designed and constructed entirely in the field by the crew of the USS Voyager during the fifth year of their Delta Quadrant exile. The Delta Flyer was intended to supplement Voyager's standard complement of Type 8, 6 and 9 shuttlecraft, which had proven insufficient for many of the desperate and high-risk scenarios frequently generated by Voyager's unique predicament. Conceptualised by Lieutenant Tom Paris and taking inspiration from the aesthetic of ancient racing cars, the Delta Flyer offered a far wider mission profile than a standard shuttlecraft, with a degree of versatility and adaptability that matched and in some ways exceeded that of Starfleet's recent Danube-class runabout. At a length of 15.1 metres and a width of 8.5 metres, the frame of the Delta Flyer is robust and acutely refined, presenting a narrow targeting profile and a highly efficient thrust-to-mass ratio, both in space and within a planet's atmosphere. The shuttle can be operated at near-optimal capacity by only a single pilot, but generally carries a crew of 4 to 6, within a space-efficient cockpit area and a multi-purpose utility bay to the ship's aft. The ship's design deliberately incorporated Borg technology, based on information and materials provided by the liberated Borg drone 7 of 9. These systems notably included powerful multi-adaptive unimatrix deflector shields and nanoprobe augmented photonic missiles. The weapons complement of the Delta Flyer is impressively large for a ship of its size, with a wide phaser coverage provided by eight high-energy phaser arrays, as well as both forward and aft photon torpedo launchers, bow-mounted photonic missile ports, and pulsed phase cannons for close-range engagements. The ship's outer surface is coated with high-strength parametallic hull plating, and the structural frame is comprised of heavily reinforced geranium, providing impressive impact and energy resistance in combat and in extreme environments. The Delta Flyer was capable of maintaining a cruising speed of warp 6 under normal conditions, but could be accelerated to a rated maximum of warp 6.8 and theoretically as high as warp 7.5 for brief periods in emergency situations, though this was never tested in practice and was considered extremely dangerous. The ship's warp nacelles are retractable, extending when in use to provide a tuned circumferential warp field and retracting into the ship's durable frame in normal flight to protect them from harm. When operating at sublight speeds, the flyer offers responsiveness and maneuverability far in excess of any other Starfleet auxiliary craft, making the ship extremely useful for mid-range scouting operations and in combat with other small craft. An expansion to the ship's design made in 2377 added retractable impulse output manifolds that could be used in short bursts to almost double the flyer's already impressive acceleration. The Delta Flyer's first mission involved a dangerous descent into the atmosphere of a gas giant, with the purpose of recovering a lost multispatial probe previously deployed by Voyager. This mission allowed the Flyer to make use of its unusually high pressure resistance and complex immersion shielding systems that allowed the craft not only to endure the rigours of flight within the atmosphere of a gas giant, but also to operate while completely submerged in water, even at depths of more than 560 kilometres. The Flyer was successful in recovering the probe, and continued to find success in numerous high-risk missions across the following two years. Ultimately, the Delta Flyer was destroyed in action by a Borg tactical cube during an engagement in early 2377, but was quickly replaced by a reconstruction of the vessel, dubbed simply Delta Flyer II. This newer craft continued to serve aboard Voyager through the final year of its voyage, and survived to return to Earth in triumph along with its parent vessel on Stardate 54973.4. Thank you for watching Space Dock. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.